Today's July 18th, 2023, and we're at the Stratford Veterans Museum, located at 5952 Main Street in Stratford, Connecticut. My name is Greg Sperling. I'm one of the interviewers here at the museum. I'm joined today by former U.S. Army Captain Lawrence Walker, who was born June 10th, 1943, and served in the Army from July 15th, 1964 to February 28th, 1969. Captain Walker was an infantry unit commander who served over 17 months in Vietnam where he was awarded the Bronze Star for heroism. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you. Pleasure to have you here, obviously, to have her sto your story told. Um, tell us a little bit about where you were born, where you grew up, things right. like that. I was born in New York City, uh, raised in New York City, uh, Went to undergraduate college in uh, City University of New York. Uh, graduate in uh, graduate uh, in business at Columbia University. Uh, ROTC in uh, college uh, accepted a regular army commission, thinking it would be a career. Uh, when I got out of school, and uh, was assigned to uh, uh, Schofield Barracks, 25th Infantry Division in uh, Hawaii. Uh, there we spent uh, about a year training and we were one of the first units to uh, be deployed uh, to Vietnam in uh, December of 1965. Uh, what else can I uh, answer for you at this time? Um, why did you pick the Army? Why was that the service of choice? Uh, well. ROTC was uh, Army in the college I was in. Uh, my brother preceded me in ROTC uh, and uh, followed in his footsteps. Always was interested in the military and felt it was my obligation to uh, uh, do my duty. Okay. Um, how about high school and college? Extracurricular, extracurricular activities, sports, anything? Uh, mostly track, okay. but track, business. Uh, but uh, nothing in particular. All right. And did you select your military occupational specialty, or was that yeah? That no, was I selected you... infantry, and uh, eventually uh, uh, switched over to ordnance. That was interested in uh, artillery uh, after about the third, th after about three and a half years in infantry. Okay. Um, tell us about your service time. You know, yeah. so you well, we. Uh, we were, I think, the second division that deployed to Vietnam. We uh, went to a location about 30 miles uh, northwest, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, Saigon, uh, called Cu Chi. Uh, we were in intense uh, fighting for about the first 80 days. The unit was awarded the uh, Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. Uh, I received my Bronze Star with, uh, for Vala, uh, Air Medal, some others a, a little bit later, uh, Army Commendation Medal, a second Bronze Star, uh, and uh, sort of a lot of action there. Uh, good unit. Uh, we went over as a group, which I think uh, made a big difference in the beginning of the war, rather than having a uh, people substituting and being filled in as you needed it in your ranks. Uh, let's see, uh, we operated from the base that I talked about which also was named uh, Kuchi. The uh, whole division was there. We went out on uh, field maneuvers uh, uh, to all the way up to the Cambodian border probably sometimes in Cambodia because you didn't know, there's no border markings uh, there. Uh, I guess an interesting story is the, uh, the uh, quickest, not the quickest, the uh, uh, closest I came to being killed was actually by a snake that we uh, were destroying a enemy uh, outpost and uh, I was walking about from here to the camera, which is about three feet, and there was a full out, full cobra with its uh, hood open in front of me. Uh, had my uh, M14 or M16 with me, uh, opened up a full clip of 30 rounds, and missed the snake completely. <laughs> One of my men then just come over and shot him with a shot the snake with a pistol. But if the 
snake was not cut or severed in some part, it would have lunged out and I probably wouldn't be here today. But uh, came back after uh, about uh, 10 months in my first tour and uh, then volunteered for a second tour, taking over a group of uh, NCOs to repair a uh, uh, piece of artillery called an M107, which was a 175 millimeter howitzer. Uh, and it was a very, very good tour. It was only five or six months, but we traveled up and down the whole country where these uh, units were located, or these artillery pieces were located in different units, and uh, repaired them. Uh, and then some of us would go to one location, some to another, and then we'd meet back uh, at a location and then decide where we would go next. But uh, we were pretty much, not pretty much, we were all on our own, and uh, it was an uh, interesting time. And uh, I, I think also when you're young, you're not afraid, at least I wasn't. You know, as I get to be older, as I am older, uh, I think back and I would be afraid now uh, rather than then. Okay. Let's go back to, um, was it Kuchi, right? Your right. base there. What was, what was the base like? What was your living situation like on the base? When we were, we're, when when we were on the base, which was probably about four or five days out of the month, the base was uh, huge. And uh, I would say at least uh, oh, five square miles around for the division. Uh, and uh, when we back there, it was, uh, it was calm. I mean, it was... Uh, you get mortar around, shot in, but you get you get used to it. You get uh, get used to having your patrols go out at night, but uh, it was not particularly dangerous uh, compared to when you're in the field. Were you in tents? Were you in Quonset huts buildings? What uh, kind of? We were in. Uh, when we were back there, we had Quonset huts. We had bunks, uh, and uh, as opposed to when we we're in the field. Uh, uh, normally it was uh, sleeping bags and occasionally tents, but uh, pretty uh, uh, rustic or whatever we would call it. Okay. Uh, chow Hall back on the base was chow hall, decent? Yeah, chow Hall, all, mostly all sea rations oh, okay. and, and the like. Uh, uh, cooked different ways, but right. uh, you don't really think of food. You know, I'm a couple of hundred pounds now, I was 150 pounds. You know, then and uh, 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 when you're back at base, it was uh, it was uh, uh, calm. Okay, and now when and when you were in the bush, when you're in the field, um, did you guys go out in uh, platoon size, company size? What's uh, yeah, everything, everything? Everything from a squad to a platoon. Uh, squad being all, about 11 people, platoon 40 some odd, company 180. Right. You'd go out on your big missions with a battalion or even a brigade uh, to clear uh, certain areas. So depending on uh, the mission, certain uh, operations were uh, very well planned. Other operations where you would go out into a uh, zone to try and clear the enemy. And in our area, there were miles and miles of Viet Cong tunnels that would stretch from uh, our base. In fact, our base was built over some of their tunnels uh, that would stretch uh, 30 or 40 miles to the Cambodian border. Okay. And so when you're not in the base, you're, you're on these missions. Um, safe to say that all of them involve some type of contact with the enemy? Uh, I wouldn't say all, but I'd say 60-70% involved some contact, uh, some small contact with uh, you know a squad of their people and others. Okay. Uh, when you're dealing with you, a large size unit of your own, you'd run into a large size unit of theirs. Okay. I can imagine the casualties, should, you know, and that your unit was pretty high? Uh, I would say they, they, they were... Uh, not that high. Uh, my, my belief is that uh, the uh, army is run by the uh, NCOs uh, and that uh, the quality of the uh, NCOs and the uh, 
leadership that they provided and guidance to a 21-year-old like myself uh, was invaluable. And we had uh, probably 10% casualties, maybe 5% deaths okay. uh, in the in the unit. Uh, a lot of the uh, my own feeling is, you know, where the war really deteriorated was a lot of these. Uh, first sergeants, master sergeants, and staff sergeants, they had been in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, they went home, and they were sent to go back, and they said, no, I've survived three wars, uh, enough is enough, and that's when they started to send over the 90-day wonders in uh, both uh, offices and NCOs. Okay. Uh, were you ever injured? No, no, I was very lucky that I uh, never, never wanted, nor did I get the Purple Heart. All right. You told us one of your, you know, memorable experiences meeting up with the, the Cobra enemy. Uh, is, there, is there any other memorable experiences, you know, positive or negative, that you think is important to share? I, I think the first deaths, uh, you know, in the unit uh, uh, were... You don't expect it. You don't. Uh, uh, you don't realize exactly what you're in until you're in it. And uh, you know, I, I think deaths are friends, and uh, uh, injuries, uh, people with you know, severed arms, people. Uh, uh, you know, it's hard. And probably even more so because, like you said, you went over as a unit. Right. You were trained as a unit, prepared to deploy, exactly. and deployed as a unit. So it wasn't, there weren't any replacements that were strangers or anything like that. These were all exactly. men that men that Everybody, you, you knew everyone. Right. And you knew your, uh, uh, well, as I said, you, you knew everyone. You knew your, your sergeants. You knew your uh, privates. You knew who was good, who was bad, who was a troublemaker, who was... Uh, you know, who was, uh, you can rely upon. And, uh, you know, it, it, it comes as a shock when you see helicopters shut down, when you see, uh, 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 and it, it also is, is uh, uh, very impressive when you go out as a brigade, let's say, which is three, which is uh, three battalions, and uh, you're going out with a uh, hundred helicopters at a time and uh, uh, on your missions from one place to another. Okay. Um, you had mentioned, you know, I, I had spoken of the first Purple Heart, you had, I mean, uh, Bronze Star, you would talk about the second Bronze Star. What other personal awards or citations did you receive during your military service? Well, the, the one I'm most proud of, I'll go back, is the Bronze Star for Valor, where uh, two of my uh, men were uh, trapped in an open field and under intense enemy fire, as the citation reads, uh, I went out with another officer and uh, we uh, rescued them, brought them back in. And, uh, you know, to this day I'd love to know what happened to them. I've tried to find out, but uh, I don't know if they died that day or if they, uh, if they lived, uh, if they were evacuated and time passes and Absolutely. And the other um, Bronze Star? The other Bronze Star was for uh, meritorious service and leadership uh, while in Vietnam. Okay. Combat Infantry Badge is a badge uh, most proud of, which is uh, uh, for any infantry person who is in combat, uh, there's a certain badge that they get. Uh, Air Medal, uh, too. Uh, Air Medal is uh, or 25 combat assaults by helicopter. So I have uh, 50, probably more than 50, but the first for 25, the second for 25, so you get an Oakley cluster for that. Army Commendation Medal, uh, again, uh, not for heroism, but for leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. And the whole unit was, in, uh, was awarded the uh, I think I said it already, the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry for, uh, uh, I think they credited us with uh, uh, 
uh, killing 750 Viet Cong in the first uh, 90 days. Okay. Um, in Vietnam, how did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, much different than it is for a soldier now with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, uh, you were allowed one phone call for about five minutes every month. Uh, and uh, so you had the one phone call and everything else was letters. Now, now everything is by uh, computer. And how long, would the how long would the letter take from the time you sent it well, to? Well, it wasn't bad. No? You know, maybe a week, maybe okay. a week or 10 days, but uh, uh, they weren't, uh, you know, I, I think they treated people uh, uh, well, you know, I think uh, a lot of the crap that comes out of it about Vietnam is, uh, I don't know that they've made a good movie uh, about Vietnam yet. Perhaps we were soldiers once and young. Uh, uh, that was a good uh, book and movie, yes. Book and movie, and uh, yeah. uh, one of our, uh, after I left, one of our captains uh, received the Medal of Honor and uh, he turned out to be a two-star general in his career and uh, uh, lives in Massachusetts uh, uh, and, uh, you know, quite, quite a story which I really don't want to get into but uh, uh, of, of how he won it and, uh, uh, but uh, there are a lot of uh, hero, heroes over there. Okay. Now what, are, what about entertainment when you were back on the base or? Uh, Lucky sometimes, so Bob Hope, you know, okay. came and you get the stars who, you know, who would uh, come over uh, occasionally if you were lucky enough to be back at base. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see them, uh, you know, much like you, you see on the old, what I would call newsreels uh, uh, today. Okay. What about leave? Did you take leave anywhere leave, during your time you, there? You were, you were allowed uh, uh, one week every six months and you could go to... Hawaii, Thailand, uh, Taipei, uh, I, I went to what was then called uh, Formosa and now called uh, Taiwan for a week and uh, uh, w which was uh, which was great. You get away from it all. Okay. And what was your experience with your fellow servicemen, your, the officers you worked for, with, your uh, NCOs? Very good. Very, very good. Uh, you, you have to work well together if you're going to succeed. And I think that we talked about, you know, it, you were uh, beneficial in the fact that, you know, this was a, an entire unit that deployed together right. after training together because, you, like you said, you were yeah. one of the first uh, units into... Yeah, I, I think if that. you don't come, when, when the war, uh, see, I went over in 65, about 68, 69, when it was nearly all replacements, I think that's when really the heavy drugs started and... Uh, morale would break down and you get the stories of fragging offices and uh, mm -hmm. all the like. So, uh, and I think a big mistake in the war was rotating everybody uh, every year because just think of uh, uh, any business that you have to change over a hundred percent except for your top generals uh, every year. So you're rotating 500,000 people in and out uh, every 12 months. Yeah, you know, it's, there's a lot of drawbacks to that, that's for sure. So it, after your first tour, you'd come back to the States and you had and, uh, moved over to artillery. Right. And then you'd go back to Vietnam, you know, for another six, seven months. Right. And you're repairing artillery, traveling the countryside. And at some point, you decide, I'm done. Yeah. I, I came, close, I came close to staying in. Uh, okay. My wife, I was married at the time, my wife uh, didn't like me away all the time and moving all the time. Uh, so it was, it was a hard decision on my part, but it came down to my wife or, uh, my wife or the army. So I chose, chose my wife. <laughs> Smart decision, right? <laughs> okay, and um, where did you go when you left the service? I uh, went to, uh, at the time, uh, didn't have a pot to piss in, so it was who uh, would give me ten grand a year in a car. So I went with a uh, large corporation, no longer in existence, American Can, 
and then uh, had a successful business career. I rose to be a general manager of uh, a few companies and vice president of marketing of larger companies and uh, retired uh, totally about uh, I'm 80 now and retired was about 72, 73. In what part of the country were you in? Uh, I was lucky that I, I, uh, I uh, love the Northeast and uh, during my business career I was uh, pretty much all in the Northeast, uh, okay. Philadelphia to Boston. Okay. And when did you settle in Stratford? Uh, settled in Stratford actually 40, uh, 47 years ago, give or take. Why here? Why here? Oh, yeah. I, I can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, you know, your days preceding your returning from the service, um, did you come back to Stratford? Where did you go? No, back to, back to New York where I was living okay. at the time. All right. And uh, when I, I wound up in Connecticut, that I was working in New York for the company I mentioned, and then uh, they moved to uh, Norwalk, Connecticut, where they okay. were headquartered. So I knew I was going to move to Connecticut and settled in Stratford. Okay. Originally, well, settled originally in Fairfield, and then moved to a, a smaller house in uh, Stratford, uh, down by Sterling House, and then moved up uh, close to where we are at the VA uh, Museum uh, about 45 years ago. Okay. Uh, any close relationships or friends that you kept from your military service? Uh, about five or six that I keep in touch with. You get to see them often, or no? Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, units uh, have kept together by different uh, 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 we call them assemblies, different Reunions, gatherings, yeah, okay. units. Yeah. But uh, we never had that for whatever reason. Okay. All right. Are Which they, we did. Are they local? You're the five or six that you take. No, those they're, they're, they're all, over, they're the all, over, all okay. over the place. All right. And what about veterans organizations? Did you happen to join any veterans organizations after your service? No, I'm, I'm very active at the VA in West Haven okay. where I uh, uh, help out in a number of studies, mostly trying to help uh, different professors, doctors on uh, PTSD issues with uh, returning servicemen from uh, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, and the like. Okay. Uh, when you look upon your military career and obviously you know your life after, how would you say that your military career affected your, I, your life? I think it definitely shaped me. It provided the discipline. It provided uh, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, feelings that I have for uh, the military. And let's see, I'm a loss for word, a little bit of a loss for words. But uh, what I what I think it provides you with is. Uh, value of integrity, value of honor, value of uh, truthfulness, value of uh, helping other people where you can. Great. Is there anything um, that we haven't talked about that you think is important to get on the record? As no, far as you're... I'm very pleased uh, that Stratford is uh, uh, opening this uh, VA museum for, for the last uh, yeah, I'll ask you, how long, when, when did the original idea come? Uh, well, the original idea was a long, long time coming, but yeah. uh, November... Well, I think it's come along, come along great. And November 21 is when they opened the door, so. Yeah, but it's come along great. I think the room we're in, I, I, I know you can see pictures in the background of uh, people from Stratford that have served in the military, and there are different rooms here with uh, people... Uh, that unfortunately died in different wars and different exhibits. Uh, but I wish everyone in Stratford can see what people have uh, done here. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time and, and most appreciative of your service to our well, country. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. what you're doing.